Marxian economics, or the Marxian school of economics, refers to a school of economic thought. Its foundations can be traced back to the critique of classical political economy in the research by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Marxian economics refers to several different theories and includes multiple schools of thought, which are sometimes opposed to each other, and in many cases Marxian analysis is used to complement or supplement other economic approaches. Because one does not necessarily have to be politically Marxist to be economically Marxian, the two adjectives coexist in usage rather than being synonymous. They share a semantic field while also allowing connotative and denotative differences. Marxian economics concerns itself variously with the analysis of crisis in capitalism, the role and distribution of the surplus product and surplus value in various types of economic systems, the nature and origin of economic value, the impact of class and class struggle on economic and political processes, and the process of economic evolution. Marxian economics, particularly in academia, is distinguished from Marxism as a political ideology as well as the normative aspects of Marxist thought, with the view that Marx's original approach to understanding economics and economic development is intellectually independent from Marx's own advocacy of revolutionary socialism. Marxian economists do not lean entirely upon the works of Marx and other widely known Marxists, but draw from a range of Marxist and non-Marxist sources. Although the Marxian school is considered heterodox, ideas that have come out of Marxian economics have contributed to mainstream understanding of the global economy. Certain concepts of Marxian economics, especially those related to capital accumulation and the business cycle, such as creative destruction, have been fitted for use in capitalist systems. Marx's magnum opus on political economy economy was Das Kapital, Kapital a critique of political economy in three volumes, of which only the first volume was published in his lifetime 1867. the others were published by Friedrich Engels from Marx's notes. One of Marx's early works, Critique of Political Economy, was mostly incorporated into Das Kapital, especially the beginning of Volume 1. Marx's notes made in preparation for writing Das Kapital were published in 1939 under the title Grundrisse. Topic. Marx's response to classical economics Marx's economics took as its starting point the work of the best-known economists of his day, the British classical economists Adam Smith, Thomas Robert Malthus and David Ricardo. In The Wealth of Nations 1776, Smith argued that the most important characteristic of a market economy was that it permitted a rapid growth in productive abilities. Smith claimed that a growing market stimulated a greater division of labor, i.e. specialization of businesses and or workers, and in turn this led to greater productivity. Although Smith generally said little about laborers, he did note that an increased division of labor could at some point cause harm to those whose jobs became narrower and narrower as the division of labor expanded. Smith maintained that a laissez-faire economy would naturally correct itself over time. Marx followed Smith by claiming that the most important beneficial economic consequence of capitalism was a rapid growth in productivity abilities. Marx also expanded greatly on the notion that laborers could come to harm as capitalism became more productive. Additionally, Marx noted in theories of surplus value, we see the great advance made by Adam Smith beyond the physiocrats in the analysis of surplus value and hence of capital. In their view, it is only one definite kind of concrete labor agricultural labor that creates surplus value but to adam smith it is general social labor no matter in what use values it manifests itself the mere quantity of necessary labor which creates value surplus value whether it takes the form of profit rent or the secondary form of interest is nothing but a part of this labor appropriated by the owners of the material conditions of labor in the exchange with living labor Malthus' claim in an essay on the principle of population 1798 that population growth was the primary cause of subsistence level wages for laborers provoked Marx to develop an alternative theory of wage determination. Whereas Malthus presented an ahistorical theory of population growth, Marx offered a theory of how a relative surplus population in capitalism tended to push wages to subsistence levels. Marx saw this relative surplus population as coming from economic causes and not from biological causes as in Malthus. This economic-based theory of surplus population is often labeled as Marx's theory of the reserve army of labor. Ricardo developed a theory of distribution within capitalism. 
that is, a theory of how the output of society is distributed to classes within society. The most mature version of this theory, presented in On the Principles of Political Economy and Taxation 1817, was based on a labor theory of value in which the value of any produced object is equal to the labor embodied in the object and Smith too presented a labor theory of value, but it was only incompletely realized. Also notable in Ricardo's economic theory was that profit was a deduction from society's output and that wages and profit were inversely related, an increase in profit came at the expense of a reduction in wages. Marx built much of the formal economic analysis found in Capital on Ricardo's theory of the economy. Topic. Marx's theory Marx employed a labor theory of value, which holds that the value of a commodity is the socially necessary labor time invested in it. In this model, capitalists do not pay workers the full value of the commodities they produce, rather, they compensate the worker for the necessary labor only the worker's wage, which cover only the necessary means of subsistence in order to maintain him working in the present and his family in the future as a group. This necessary labor is necessarily only a fraction of a full working day, the rest, surplus labor, would be pocketed by the capitalist as profit. Marx theorized that the gap between the value a worker produces and his wage is a form of unpaid labor, known as surplus value. Moreover, Marx argues that markets tend to obscure the social relationships and processes of production, he called this commodity fetishism. People are highly aware of commodities, and usually don't think about the relationships and labor they represent. Marx's analysis leads to the consideration of economic crisis. A propensity to crisis—what we would call business cycles—was not recognized as an inherent feature of capitalism by any other economist of Marx's time," observed Robert Heilbronner in The Worldly Philosophers. Although future events have certainly indicated his prediction of successive boom and crash, Marx's theory of economic cycles was formalized by Richard Goodwin in A Growth Cycle, 1967, a paper published during the Centenary Year of Capital, Volume 1. Topic. Methodology Marx used dialectics, a method that he adapted from the works of Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Dialectics focuses on relation and change, and tries to avoid seeing the universe as composed of separate objects, each with essentially stable unchanging characteristics. One component of dialectics is abstraction, out of an indifferentiated mass of data or system conceived of as an organic whole, one abstracts portions to think about or to refer to. One may abstract objects, but also, and more typically, relations, and processes of change. An abstraction may be extensive or narrow, may focus on generalities or specifics, and may be made from various points of view. For example, a sale may be abstracted from a buyer's or a seller's point of view, and one may abstract a particular sale or sales in general. Another component is the dialectical deduction of categories. Marx uses Hegel's notion of categories, which are forms, for economics, the commodity form, the money form, the capital form etc. have to be systematically deduced instead of being grasped in an outward way as done by the bourgeois economists. This corresponds to Hegel's critique of Kant's transcendental philosophy. Marx regarded history as having passed through several stages. The details of his periodization vary somewhat through his works, but it essentially is, primitive communism, slave societies, feudalism, capitalism, socialism, communism, capitalism being the present stage and communism the future. Marx occupied himself primarily with describing capitalism. Historians place the beginning of capitalism some time between about 1450 and some time in the 17th century Hobbes -Bomb. .Marx defines a commodity as a product of human labor that is produced for sale in a market, and many products of human labor are commodities. Marx began his major work on economics, capital, with a discussion of commodities. Chapter 1 is called Commodities. Topic commodities The worth of a commodity can be conceived of in two different ways, which Marx calls use value and value. A commodity's use value is its usefulness for fulfilling some practical purpose, for example, the use value of a piece of food is that it provides nourishment and pleasurable taste, the use value of a hammer, that it can drive nails. Value is, on the other hand, a measure of a commodity's worth in comparison to other commodities. 
It is closely related to exchange value, the ratio at which commodities should be traded for one another, but not identical. Value is at a more general level of abstraction, exchange value is a realization or form of it. Marx argued that if value is a property common to all commodities, then whatever it is derived from, whatever determines it, must be common to all commodities. The only relevant thing that is, in Marx's view, common to all commodities is human labor, they are all produced by human labor. Marx concluded that the value of a commodity is simply the amount of human labor required to produce it. Thus Marx adopted a labor theory of value, as had his predecessors Ricardo and McCullough. Marx himself traced the existence of the theory at least as far back as an anonymous work, some thoughts on the interest of money in general, and particularly the public funds, and c. Published in London around 1739 or 1740, Marx placed some restrictions on the validity of his value theory. He said that in order for it to hold, the commodity must not be a useless item, and it is not the actual amount of labor that went into producing a particular individual commodity that determines its value, but the amount of labor that a worker of average energy and ability, working with average intensity, using the prevailing techniques of the day, would need to produce it. A formal statement of the law is, the value of a commodity is equal to the average socially necessary labor time required for its production. Capital, I, Chap I, P, 39 in Progress Publishers, Moscow, Eden. Marx's contention was that commodities tend, at a fairly general level of abstraction, to exchange at value, that is, if commodity A, whose value is V, is traded for commodity B, it will tend to fetch an amount of commodity B whose value is the same V. Particular circumstances will cause divergence from this rule, however. <laughs> Money Marx held that metallic money, such as gold, is a commodity, and its value is the labor time necessary to produce it, mine it, smelt it, etc. Marx argued that gold and silver are conventionally used as money because they embody a large amount of labor in a small, durable, form, which is convenient. Paper money is, in this model, a representation of gold or silver, almost without value of its own but held in circulation by state decree. Topic. Production. Marx lists the elementary factors of production as labor, the personal activity of man, capital, I, 7, 1, the subject of labor, the thing worked on, the instruments of labor, tools, laboring domestic animals like horses, chemicals used in modifying the subject, etc. Some subjects of labor are available directly from nature, uncaught fish, unmined coal, etc. Others are results of a previous stage of production, these are known as raw materials, such as flour or yarn. Workshops, canals, and roads are considered instruments of labor. Capital, I, 7, 1. Coal for boilers, oil for wheels, and hay for draft horses is considered raw material, not instruments of labor. The subjects of labor and instruments of labor together are called the means of production. Relations of production are the relations human beings adopt toward each other as part of the production process. In capitalism, wage labor and private property are part of the relations of production. Calculation of value of a product price not to be confused with value. If labor is performed directly on nature and with instruments of negligible value, the value of the product is simply the labor time. If labor is performed on something that is itself the product of previous labor that is, on a raw material, using instruments that have some value, the value of the product is the value of the raw material, plus depreciation on the instruments, plus the labor time. Depreciation may be figured simply by dividing the value of the instruments by their working life, e.g. if a lathe worth £1,000 lasts in use 10 years it imparts value to the product at a rate of £100 per year. Topic. Effective technical progress According to Marx, the amount of actual product i.e. use value that a typical worker produces in a given amount of time is the productivity of labor. It has tended to increase under capitalism. This is due to increase in the scale of enterprise, to specialization of labor, and to the introduction of machinery. The immediate result of this is that the value of a given item tends to decrease, because the labor time necessary to produce it becomes less. In a given amount of time, labor produces more items, but each unit has less value, the total value created per time remains the same. 
This means that the means of subsistence become cheaper, therefore the value of labor power or necessary labor time becomes less. If the length of the working day remains the same, this results in an increase in the surplus labor time and the rate of surplus value. Technological advancement tends to increase the amount of capital needed to start a business, and it tends to result in an increasing preponderance of capital being spent on means of production constant capital as opposed to labor variable capital. Marx called the ratio of these two kinds of capital the composition of capital. Topic current theorizing in Marxian economics Marxian economics has been built upon by many others, beginning almost at the moment of Marx's death. The second and third volumes of Das Kapital were edited by his close associate Friedrich Engels, based on Marx's notes. Marx's theories of surplus value was edited by Karl Kautsky. The Marxian value theory and the Perron Frobenius theorem on the positive eigenvector of a positive matrix are fundamental to mathematical treatments of Marxist economics. The universities offering one or more courses in Marxian economics, or teach one or more economics courses on other topics from a perspective that they designate as Marxian or Marxist, include Colorado State University, New School for Social Research, School of Oriental and African Studies, Universiteit Maastricht, University of Bremen, University of California, Riverside, University of Leeds, University of Maine, University of Manchester, University of Massachusetts Amherst, University of Massachusetts Boston, Boston, University of Missouri-Kansas City, University of Sheffield, University of Utah, and York University Toronto. .English language journals include Capital and Class, Historical Materialism, Monthly Review, Rethinking Marxism, Review of Radical Political Economics, and Studies in Political Economy. Topic criticisms Much of the critique of classical Marxian economics came from Marxian economists that revised Marx's original theory, or by the Austrian School of Economics. V. K. Dmitriev, writing in 1898, Ladislaus von Bortkovich, writing in 1906–07, and subsequent critics claimed that Marx's value theory and law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall are internally inconsistent. In other words, the critics allege that Marx drew conclusions that actually do not follow from his theoretical premises. Once these alleged errors are corrected, his conclusion that aggregate price and profit are determined by, and equal to, aggregate value and surplus value no longer holds true. This result calls into question his theory that the exploitation of workers is the sole source of profit, whether the rate of profit in capitalism has, as Marx predicted, tended to fall as a subject of debate. N. Okashio, in 1961, devised a theorem, Okashio's theorem showing that if capitalists pursue cost-cutting techniques and if the real wage does not rise, the rate of profit must rise. The inconsistency allegations have been a prominent feature of Marxian economics and the debate surrounding it since the 1970s. Among the critics pointing out internal inconsistencies are former and current Marxian and or Sraffian economists, such as Paul Sweezy, Nobuo Okashio, Ian Steedman, John Romer, Gary Monjovi, and David Leibman, who proposed that the field be grounded in their correct versions of Marxian economics instead of in Marx's critique of political economy in the original form in which he presented and developed it in Capital, proponents of the temporal single system interpretation TSSI of Marx's value theory claim that the supposed inconsistencies are actually the result of misinterpretation. They argue that when Marx's theory is understood as temporal and single system, the alleged internal inconsistencies disappear. In a recent survey of the debate, a proponent of the TSSI concludes that the proofs of inconsistency are no longer defended. The entire case against Marx has been reduced to the interpretive issue. Topic relevance to economics Marxist economics was assessed as lacking relevance in 1988 by Robert M. Solo, who criticized the new Palgrave Dictionary of Economics for oversampling articles on Marxism themes, giving a false impression of the state of play in the economics profession. Solo stated that Marx was an important and influential thinker, and Marxism has been a doctrine with intellectual and practical influence. The fact is, however, that most serious English speaking economists regard Marxist economics as an irrelevant dead end. Economists working in the Marxian Sraffian tradition represent a small minority of modern economists, and that their writings have virtually no impact upon the professional work of most economists in major English language universities, according to George Stigler. Neo-Marxian economics The terms neo-Marxian, post-Marxian, and radical political economics were first used to refer to a distinct tradition of economic thought in the 1970s and 1980s. 
In industrial economics, the neo Marxian approach stresses the monopolistic rather than the competitive nature of capitalism. This approach is associated with Michal Kalecki, Paul A. Barron, and Paul Sweezy. Topic see also topic Footnotes topic References topic Further reading Althusser, Lewis and Ballybar, Etienne. Reading Capital. London, Verso, 2009. Bottomore, Tom, ed. A Dictionary of Marxist Thought. Oxford, Blackwell, 1998. Cochrane, James L. 1970. Marxian Macroeconomics. Macroeconomics Before Keynes. Glenview, Scott, Forsman and Co. pp. 43-58. OCLC 799965716. Fine, Ben. Marx's Capital. 5th ed. London, Pluto, 2010. Harvey, David. A Companion to Marx's Capital. London, Verso, 2010. Harvey, David. The Limits of Capital. London, Verso, 2006. Mandel, Ernest. Marxist Economic Theory. New York, Monthly Review Press, 1970. Mandel, Ernest. The Formation of the Economic Thought of Karl Marx. New York, Monthly Review Press, 1977. Morishima, Michio. Marx's Economics, A Dual Theory of Value and Growth. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1973. Postone, Moishi. Time, Labor, and Social Domination, A Reinterpretation of Marx's Critical Theory. Cambridge, England, Cambridge University Press, 1993. Saad Filio, Alfredo. The Value of Marx, Political Economy for Contemporary Capitalism. London, Routledge, 2002. Wolf, Richard D. and Resnick, Stephen A. Contending Economic Theories, Neoclassical, Keynesian, and Marxian. The MIT Press, 2012. ISBN 0262517833 Topic. External links Marxian Economics Archive from Schwartz Center of Economic Policy Analysis Marxian Political Economy The Neo-Marxian Schools Archive from Schwartz Center of Economic Policy Analysis A Marxian Introduction to Modern Economics International Working Group on Value Theory An Outline of Marxist Economics, Chapter 6 of Reformism or Revolution by Alan Woods the End of the Market A website containing a critical evaluation The idea of the market clearing price which affirms Marx's theory that in capitalism profitability would decline The Neo-Marxian School's Radical Political Economy If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Monthly review article detailing the degeneration of Marxian economics.